Washington, D.C. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I wish I lived there. Okay. I think we're ready. Walked everything. Yeah, I'm ready. Yep. Ready when you okay. are. Good evening, everybody. This meeting of the RMLD Board of Commissioners is being videotaped at RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street for distribution to the community TV stations in uh, Reading, North Reading, Linfield, and Wilmington. The Hello, Hamid. The RMLD <laughs> Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment uh, at the discretion of the chair. We just ask that all questions um, be directed to the chair and that you identify your name and address. Um, there is no member of the public here, I don't think, so that is moot for the time being. Phil, are you okay to be yes. board secretary? Yes, I will be. I volunteer to be secretary between now, between now and March. Very good then. Thank right. you. Mm -hmm. Three months. Mm -hmm. Three months. Wow. Okay. Oh. Nice. Are you getting paid okay. by the word or what? Nothing. <laughs> Double I'll, the usual just rate. Consider sa I'm saving you the rest of you. <laughs> and uh, FinCom members are not here, but they're listed here. Karen Herrick or Mark Docks. Uh, Mark's now on the select board. So, um, but yeah. So with that, um, public comment. I don't think we have any members of the public. No. Uh, the cab meeting um, just occurred, and I attended. It was a good meeting. Uh, Vivek, would you like to just brief us on anything from that? Yeah, uh, at the cab meeting, we I guess the main topic was the was a financial update, and about I, I have my notes here, so I can just pull it up and the summary. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm, it's basically really good accounts receivable. Uh, I think that was one thing, yeah. and. The operating and maintenance expenses are under budget by 12.7% through November, and this uh, unrestricted cash reserve uh, of 20.7 uh, million, which covers three months of monthly operating expenses. I think we also just got Coley mentioned that uh, she shared with them the same option payment options that we get received, and uh, we'll talk to the cab members in the coming days and weeks, and at the next meeting on their their thoughts on the payment options that we will be discussing tonight. Okay, with that, I think um, we are ready to approve board minutes, yes? Yeah, okay. I'll move that the uh, board approve the meeting minutes of July 18, 2019, and September 19, 2019, and the recommendation of the general manager. Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Motion carries 5-0. <coughs> and uh, with that, I think we move to our main item which is um, to discuss the options that have been presented to us by the general manager and, and Wendy, the uh, uh, business finance director. Can you make the motion first and then we can discuss? I guess we could do that because yeah. what we're doing here is we're not we're only right. we're only asking the cab to to consider take the a look at it. Sure. So yeah. so we'll start with the motion? Yeah, let's we'll start with the motion. Okay. Move that the board of, the board of commissioners vote to request the Citizen Advisory Board to review and comment on three payment options presented by the one E&E study and the two and three GM in concert with the uh, Business Finance Director and provide such feedback to the Board of Commissioners for their final approval of the Town of Reading payment. Okay. Do we need a second? No, we can. Second. Second. Okay, so we'll discuss this now. And just a quick. Why don't you read what the three motion, the three options are first? Yeah, I will. I'll read them, but also um, just to point out that the there's some tables that I think um, have been posted on the website. Is that right, Wendy? So anybody who wants to see how these these three options actually play out in terms of dollars, they are posted as part of the board book on the uh, RMLD website. Um, the first. Um, well, actually, Colleen, do you want to? Are you okay with explaining what the options are? Or Wendy, do you want to come up and do that? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, can I just ask that, uh, do you want me to just go over the tables or do you want to give um, the consideration of why we decide on specific options? I think, well, maybe first just kind of set the table for what we're doing here. We're, we're 
we're proposing, you know, what we, we've had a, a three-year process now of, of discussing this topic, and right. we're, we're, I guess I could just offer that preamble that there's been a three-year process of discussing this topic, and we're at the point now where um, Colleen and Wendy have come up with options informed in part by a study that was done over the past year, and so we're here to just sort of formally receive these options, which Wendy will now explain, and ask the CAB for feedback, and then hopefully in a subsequent meeting the board can actually go ahead and and, and move move right. forward with one of them. Would you like me to also state the objectives of why we chose the specific yes. options? Sure. Yes, that would be okay. great. So go ahead and... So I'll just uh, state the objectives. So the reason, the reasoning behind uh, the options that we are presenting, uh, number one is to maintain the strategic financial plan and the RMLD mission statement to cover the cost of production, to cover all town payments above and below the line, to minimize projected annual rate increases. Um, in all scenarios, rate increases annually are projected. Remain competitive in the middle of the rate comparison pack, all three classes. Cover capital improvement plan and all scheduled construction transfer from operating fund. Um, to depart based on present capital improvement plan budget from a temporary 8% rate of return and return to the higher end of the average at about 6% rate of return. This uh, also provides an appropriate margin and rate stabilization. Uh, the last three, maintain two to three times the monthly operating expenses to operating cash ratio, as we discuss here monthly. Uh, preclude convergence of operating income ratio to town payments, um, which, is, which is really what brought us here the originally, to originally, uh, the original concern based on capital outlay, declining sales, increasing CPI and competitive rates. And lastly, to continue financial due diligence and financial planning to review electric sales, expenses, capital outlay, rate comparisons, the rate of return, operating fund, system status, and other financial obligations, scheduled or unscheduled. Okay? So we, we presented three options here. The first option was based on the uh, Energy New England study. So basically the Energy New England, Energy New England study is uh, stating that we should get to a healthy three mils per kilowatt hour sale uh, for the Town of Reading payment. This is the below the line payment. So we would transition over five years after the freeze of the $2,480,506 uh, to we'd start one year at 3.5 and then we'd go consecutive year after year all the way down to uh, calendar year 27 ending at three mills at a payment of $1.9 million. And this is all based on uh, the fact that kilowatt hour sales stay flat because that's the current new information that we have, okay? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Oh. Yep. So um, <coughs> I was curious, Wendy, so I, I know you had done some projections on the kilowatt sales over 10 years, so that, uh, that would indicate uh, other than I'm just curious if there's new information on in terms of whether it's revenue growth opportunities because that shows like almost seven percent decline over ten years and you know kind of a, a definitely a trending negative so is there other are we basing that on optimism for some of the new uh, energy source I guess why why are we assuming flat versus uh, Chuck can you speak to that at all or Going forward, we have <coughs> a couple of uh, impacts that we have identified. Uh, we are in the process of quantifying what they are right now. We have uh, an electric vehicle program or an electrification program, including an electric vehicle program, a heat pump uh, program, both of which uh, are looking to move energy consumption from other sectors into uh, the electric sector. Uh, we expect that over time those will provide uh, growth in sales opportunities. Uh, we also know that we had uh, some of the uh, reductions uh, in load over the last seven or eight years uh, due to general economic effects and due to efficiency effects. 
In 2014, the federal government uh, ordered the cessation of the production of incandescent light bulbs and we've kind of switched over now to either LED or compact fluorescent technology. That's pretty stable. We entered a program where all of the HPS sodium uh, street lighting was converted to LED technology and now we're at a stable point there. So that's looking kind of flat. In addition, uh, we have a couple of apartment complexes uh, that are going to be adding uh, units to the town. Uh, these are sort of deferred residential growth, if you will. Uh, my quick review of the numbers didn't show that uh, we've had multiple projects of this type in the past few years. So this looks kind of, kind of a boom. So I don't have uh, perfect information. This has not been a rigorous analysis, but based on what I've been seeing, uh, the changes in the economy, the fact that uh, some of the uh, efficiency ec uh, events have slowed a little bit, and in fact we have programs to enhance uh, electric load. Uh, I'm predicting it flat for right now, uh, and over time as our programs uh, accelerate, uh, I'm expecting that uh, uh, we may actually see uh, some uh, slight load growth in the half to one percent range yeah, well, uh, going forward. I guess my only thought, I, I think it's probably a reasonable assumption, but for <coughs> consumption outside this room, people may not have been familiar with some of the inner pieces here. It would be good to footnote that because in a way where there's a built-in optimism, right, that it's not going to continue to, you know, have a negative trend. Which, 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 if we purely based it on history, it would be. Good. Thank you. That take care. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So then, option two. Uh, so this is based on the RMLD uh, strategic planning and all the objectives that I had stated recently. Uh, option two is basically staying, saying that an average of 3.78 mils per kilowatt hour sales is the flat 655 million kilowatt hour sales as compared to uh, 2.48 million dollars. So we would say that we would be um, willing to go to a 3.75 stable Kilowatt, uh, mills per kilowatt hour sales over the next five years through, well, after the freeze through calendar year 27. So that would drop the payment slightly from 2,480,000 to 2,458,000. So then it would be, at least it would be a stable formula to work with. And then the third option, uh, we would it, we would continue with the 2,480,000 over a 10-year period. That would be a, a complete freeze. And of course, everything that we're um, presenting here is pending catastrophic event or uh, any reason that we would have to relook at this and um, make sure that the kilowatt hour sales are staying flat and not going down in the, the way that we had anticipated at the beginning, that it would continue to drop by 1% to 2% a year. So those are the three options right right there. So the, uh, Wendy, if I may, um, so the ones that are based on the mills uh, calculation uh, multiplied by the kilowatt hour sales um, would, uh, they, there's that self-compensating, right? I mean, when the kilowatt hour sales either go down or up, that's that's the number is what it is. In Correct. Terms of the multiplication. Right. So it could go either way. I mean, could. up or down, depending on what the kilowatt hour sales. The only one that doesn't do that uh, is one where we just hold a flat right. for that period of time. So uh, t just just a little clarification on the how the mechanics of this work. Yeah. And, th and that was the whole intention uh, from the from the beginning is to get to a, a better uh, indicator of the health of the utility for the formula. Right. Mr. Chair. Phil. Yeah. So I, I you know I look at option three. I mean option three seems like the, everybody wins in option three from what I see. But the concern I have is what happens, what's going to be the process, say, in fiscal year, you know, calendar year 25, you know, uh, the, the killer, the, it drops. What's going to be, what's going to be the process that we're going to reevaluate? 
somewhere down the road. If in, in fiscal in calendar year 25, the the uh, sales are less at this point. Right. Is, I, I believe in the past meetings we had discussed that um, along with choosing an option that we would also choose a time frame that would be acceptable to readdress this situation. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Colleen? That we had talked about that? Yes. So I guess that would be... Um, I guess it would be a decision on, on uh, part of the board to decide what would be a reasonable time frame. So maybe you're saying five years or maybe, um, well, you know. I mean, that does color things a little bit differently from my, I mean, again, you know, the 10 year option three is like everybody wins. Right. Everybody wins in our option three. You know, and once you commit to that, there's no going back. If I may, so yeah. I think the, uh, and then if you go to option two, I think the, the the spirit of option two is that it does keep it flat, but also ties it to sales. So right, I, agree. I agree, but yeah. I, I'm just you know looking at again. I, you know, I focus on option three because that seems to be again everybody wins into option three. If you if we commit to option three, you know, and then the sales drop down at some point, you know, I don't see how we get away from right not keep, not keeping that payment. So can I can I uh, the, so. Once we had uh, presented our objectives to the board, we, d we did have a uh, note bene saying that um, given the current financial status of the RMLD, a rate increase of about of up to 5% is projected over the next 10 years to meet the strategic financial plan objectives and any of the three options as listed above. As a reminder, any catastrophic event or a steady decline in kilowatt hour sales could impact the objectives and the resultant payment option. And that's what we would have to consider how often we want to re, uh, readdress this or how, how much we really want to lock in, how many years or what is, what is a target that we want to say if it goes below a certain amount, uh, a certain percentage of kilowatt hour sales, I should say. So, yeah. Uh, go ahead, Joe. I mean, so I, I, would, uh, I would read this then as uh, this is a best effort forward, but if there's extenuating circumstances, to threaten the health of the RMLD from a capital perspective or anything else, right. um, it would change. Now, that's just the caveat that's associated with this. Right. And there's no promises on this that it's going to be exactly that. We're, as a matter of fact, we can almost guarantee it will not be this. Right. <laughs> right. Any one of these options, <laughs> well, almost with certainty. Um, but but the fact is, we're trying on a best effort basis to give a, a general scenario about what it would look like with each option. Dave, can I ask a question? So, Wendy, with the locked-in option, option three, yes, if kilowatt-hour sales do drop, which are, it's not anticipated, but if they drop one or two percent per year, like they have been, right, um, at the end of when we get into years five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that must mean that the only thing that could happen is that rates will go up. Correct. For customers. They will have to. If we're going to continue to pay. In order to meet the needs of the uh, organization. Whereas an option two, if rate, if kilowatt hour sales drop like they have been, we will, uh, the t payment will drop. Com and com what's the word? That's <laughs> not that word. <laughs> With that. Is that right? We would not have the rate increases to the customers. Right, because in option two, we're saying that regardless of what the, the kilowatt hour sales are, we are going to pay 3.75 mils of that. So yes, if the kilowatt hour sales drop, then the payment will drop, still based on the formula of 3.75 mils. Yes. And that also means if we sell more kilowatt hour sales, Correct. the payment to the town is going up. Correct. So. To me, that's more of the win-win because that means we we all, you know. Well, yeah, we, it puts some you know municipal skin in the game in terms of adopting ground source heat pumps or heat pumps for for municipal properties and other things. That those things then have a different, an additional benefit back to the municipality, um, as do promotion of electric cars and other things, which moves us in the right direction as a society, hopefully. But in a, can I continue? Uh, no. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just, you know, op option one is the the healthiest one for RMLD, clearly. But that's also the one that I think would be very shocking to the town of Reading because it would be uh, it would really affect the town's budget. I would assume it would. Yes. Right. I think, at the, at, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but at the, the highest level, option one over a few years would may mean a cut of about a half a million, right? Yeah, you know, over, the, over the nine year period, over the nine it's a half a million dollars. Right. Yes. Right. Option two would keep it flat, but then it's pegged now to sales. 
So if it's up, then you go, okay, option three is flat. And the one that's not here is that what if we had done nothing? And I know we don't we don't know what the CPI would have been, but let's say if it had been 2% to pick a random number over eight years, the, the 2.4, it would have gone up to 3 million. So there would have been another half million. So I think for anybody who's thinking the payment has gotten out of control, which I think we all saw that it had right. been, that's we basically addressed that part of it, I think, to the benefit of RMLD and, and all four of our towns and the, most of all the rate payer. Right. Yeah. So. So at, um, I, I guess we're really trying about talking about getting this to the CAB. Correct. Them talk about it, uh, think about it, doodle on it for a little bit, and get back to us with what they think might be a good option so that we can Jim, take can it I, under consideration. Yeah. Sure, sure Phil, and then question, I mean, it seems to me that, you know, maybe we should be taking option three off the table. Because, and then you replace it with either option, you know, we have option one and option two, with the idea that option two, we would determine the, the period of time of which the, a potential transition takes place. I mean, I, I'm very leery about putting option three on the table with what I've heard just here, here tonight at this point. The Tom fact that somewhere Sorry. in, in, you know, in, in, the, in, in fiscal calendar year 2025, mm -hmm. the sales drop. Yeah, option two, we don't need a transition though, because it's right. almost this, it's right. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Option we one needs the transition. What, yeah. We just determine what that period should be, that that is frozen, as opposed to option three, putting that out yep. there and saying that's for, that's on for the next ten years. Sure. Let's hold that thought for one second. Let's hear what Tom had to say. Yeah. So I mean, I I, I, hear, I sort of agree with Phil saying. I guess for me, you know, I think a play here is the town is. Uh, obviously looking at resources and funding but also predictability right so because mm -hmm. it's difficult we all know for any budget process to react in you know eight months you know right. to any significant swing so uh, I was sort of thinking that what would be beneficial is something more in the in the magnitude of five years I'm trying to remember are we are we really in <laughs> we're fiscal year early and are we, are we transitioned around a calendar for are we in Fiscal year 20 now is that? We have just we're, we're just completed our full calendar year, first full calendar year, right. 19. Yes. Okay, so the this is really C. Year 20. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it would seem to me that these aren't the exact numbers, but having you know whatever five years or something of you know stability or predictability like this chart. But also, it seems to me there needs to be someone mentioned. There needs to be a, uh, a threshold at which, you know, an alarm goes off. Because from the RMLD side, the only catastrophic thing, if, if things drop like a stone, right, then we only, the only choice we have is to increase rates, right? Effectively, mm -hmm. you know, that's the only way, other way to get the the numbers up. So, which is, it, it doesn't help the town overall, right? The residents, because you know they. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, stable, right. you know, town bill, and then they get a big RMLD bill. So, if we could somehow put in, and I don't know the numbers today, maybe that's something we could just think about. If there was some threshold at which, if kilowatt hour sales dipped below a certain point, you know, that would set off a noticing to all, and then we may have to say, okay, from this point on, you know, we'll finish out whatever it is this year or next year, but then we're going to have to. Reevaluate the formula because it's uh, it sort of it sort of falls into that catastrophic. Can I ask a clarifying model. question, to Tom? Yeah, hey. Tom, Tom, you talk about option three only, because the other ones it seems like they'll just move with kilowatt hour sales, right? Right. You you're refer referencing. Yeah, three only. yeah. I guess what I'm saying is uh, we have some uh, we have some uh, freeze on the on the payment though with two, right? And option two. Um, Option two has a freeze in it, right? Yeah, but it may not be. That's why I asked what year we're in. So it's it's really just yeah. this year and next year, right? right. Um, yeah. Okay. So Goes through calendar year twenty one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yeah. A couple. Oh, sorry. A couple quick thoughts on that. Yeah. So I think already we've built in this global sort of caveat that if things get bad, yeah. you know, a few us or a future board. Could revisit it at any at any year, right? That's that's always yeah. the case. Yeah. So I think that 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 caveat is already in this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would only suggest yeah. that there be more, a little more specificity, because uh, that's a that, that 
you know that that would okay. be a field day you know <laughs> that could be a lot of things to different people you know but but I, I hear what you're saying we might just give some thought to you okay. know what examples of what that could look like because from the town's point of view you know it, it can't be code because well you know we've this happened and we, we need to that's your idea of a, my idea of a cat could you know could, <laughs> yeah. catastrophe is different than your idea of a catastrophe right can I can I add to that a yeah, little please. bit okay so I mean um, the agenda of the RMLD is first and foremost you know the responsibility to the ratepayers and of course we understand and we've heard the town of Reading's um, discussion on this and we understand that they need a number that they can um, count on with their budget so that was the reason for Colleen and I's third option so we had discussed Colleen and I had discussed if we choose option three that it might also be beneficial to put in there something to the fact of if we have a three year in a row decrease of kilowatt hour sales then we would move to stabilize the formula so we could we could choose option three but if there was um, a, a consistent occurrence of this kilowatt hour sales <coughs> decrease then the, then it would have to be stabilized at that point. Sure, and I think that tweak or any tweaks are, are something that we could also do when we're at the point of actually hammering out a motion for the actual formula. At this point, what we're doing is sending options to the cab for their input, and then it won't be the, the later January meeting, it'll be the February meeting when we next take this up seriously. Sure. So I think we have an opportunity to do these tweaks yeah. before that meeting and then during that yeah. meeting. Mm. Yeah, just final comments. So I mean, a couple of people said the last option is a win-win. I guess the only scenario it isn't is if there was a catastrophic change in our top line, right? right. Because we're committed to right. that number. So from from the RMLD side, it really isn't a. And I think ten years is a long. You know, that's hard to predict. <laughs> you know, anything. Who knows what the, what the sources will be? So I, I, I think I agree with Phil in that respect. It's uh, you know, five years we can sort of manage that window, but I think ten is. Uh, if it re if it's not self-correcting be because it, it's adjusts right. know, through the formula. A couple quick. Uh, my thought on Phil's is that I, I may tend to agree with you at this point on on the merits of option three or the downsides of it. But what we're doing now is just sending options to the cab, and it doesn't mean that we're endorsing any one of them. And I, I would add also that what we haven't put on here is any option that would have say changed the the multiplier from CPI to say one percent, so it would actually be going up. We've we've already by by selecting this we've we've eliminated any option that would have increased it, except for that which would be triggered by a, a big increase. In right, sales. no arbitrary increases like what we had before. Right, right. We, yeah. we 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 don't we do not have an option for that either restores CPI or something smaller yeah. than CPI. And, and nor nor should we. Well, right, but I'm just saying. Yeah. So I think we've already been. Cons this is already a somewhat conservative list in that sense, and I would be against removing option three at this stage of the game. Mm because sure. we're just sending it down to the cab. Yeah, I guess the only, uh, it might just help for, for them to have some import, well, what Vivek does, but I mean, the other side of it is we don't want to present an option that they all like that the board dismisses right. because we, we, right. we didn't so think it was a viable option. Which, I'm not saying we're there, but if, yeah. I mean, okay. maybe just provide that input as, uh, as something that needs more. Sure, okay. Let me just ask. Let me just ask Vivek. I mean, yeah, what's what's the message that you're going to take? That you're and this I'm asking your personal opinion, not representing the the whole cab. What's so, the message that you're going to take back from this? So, so the message is that, and I and I'm, I'm and I think I mentioned it to the cab meeting last time also, that the board is coming up with proposals that they would like us to review with the cab, and have a discussion and make a recommendation of what we support right that is at a high level that's what I take mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the details so I think that was so I'm not going any more finer than that right mm -hmm. so so we'll take whatever formally comes to the cab and then respond to that mm -hmm. um, the question I have uh, and <coughs> It's for Colleen and Wendy. I mean, it's based on the discussion we had in the cab today. There was a little bit of a conversation with Wilmington, right? So they are looking at planning 18 months out. So I think all towns want some predictability. So it's just a question of taking a sense of, okay, if you take revenues for 2019 and you say the payment 
for 2020 is going to be based on revenues for 2019. Then the, the, I, all I want to make sure is that the lag that is in the system accounts for enough planning information, so the, enough visibility so that people know what their budgets are going to be. So I want to make sure that you know the time period is appropriate. So the lag may actually, so because there was a, it was a little bit of a surprise to you, right, Colleen? Uh, what uh, George? I think was the lag would be that the payment would be based on the previous calendar year's audited kilowatt hour sales. Right. So so previous year's audited. So so it'll go back one more year, right? Right. I think the conversation in the cab, if I could. Yeah. Okay. Um, that we had said that there was no rate increase for calendar year 19. 20. What? 20. 20. 20. 20. Sorry. For calendar year 20. Um, and that anything that would affect the second half of the fiscal year for the towns that are coming up to do their fiscal year 21, that we have to get our cost of service done and that we would get that information and make sure it's segued into the town's process. It was news to me today that Wilmington does their fiscal year 21 budget process starting in November, yeah. the previous year, yeah. whereas the town of Reading does it more in February, March. So the conversation, regardless of whether you're on calendar year or fiscal year, we were never really able to project 18 months out. I mean, we have a six-year plan that shows that we're going to have rate increases every single year just to be able to do this financial plan that we have in front of us. That's going to happen every year. The first couple of years will be subsidized by bringing the rate stabilization back into policy levels. But going forward, you're going to have a bump every, every year. And we try to lay out the six-year plan so that all the towns and the CAD members have that. And that's your planning map. The best we have, we, we make that transparent. So. The only thing I can say about the payment is we spent a lot of time evaluating what's an indication of the health of a utility. Okay, so even if you decide that you want to keep it flat, we still have to say that that is approximately 3.75 mils per kilowatt hour sales. You can't go back to 2.48 million and just say it's an arbitrary number and we're just keeping it flat for 10 years arbitrarily so that our next generation has to start all over again with the health. So once we come up with the formula for the health, meaning a unit of kilowatt hour sales, you can play a little bit with the mill unit that it meets your financial, the Reading Municipal Light financials. Not every other town that's out there, our financials. So you can use all the studies to give you an overall picture of what we do in New England, what we do across the nation. But when it comes down to it, we have an oath to protect this utility. So when Wendy and I look at the numbers, we changed it or made a recommendation to go from 3 to 3.75 that would kind of hold the payout so that no one would get hurt because we, we felt like we could afford that without adversely impacting our ratepayers, not adversely impacting the town. And we've spent a lot of time on this. So I just don't want to lose that piece, mm. whatever you decide that you want to vote on. Because mm. a lot of work went into that. Yeah, no, and, and my point, and thank you, that was really good. So all, all I would say is that the towns just need to have better awareness that this is how the planning is going to be. And so if, you know, if someone takes 18 months or something, then they need to just factor that in. So that I think this just, it, it's, it's a clear communication saying this is how we're going to do it and like you said maybe yeah. fix it to mills rather than 2.48 but but I, I think the the other issue you raise is so the town is still on uh, uh, July to June I think June year yeah so what we're calling so the, the thing that have to be ra rationalized is when we talk about so for example in uh, fiscal 21 22 the the payment goes up to Two or changes to two, four, five, eight, right? So, when do we make the payments? So we're on calendar. So, does that get paid 
early, uh, late in 22? It's going to twice a year, same as it is now, and it's based on the previous, previous year, calendar year's years. audited financials of kilowatt hour sales that we submit to the Department of Public Utilities. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we do now, or that's what we would do now, and how we pay it out right. now. But that's still not going to be in lockstep with the town because the town is going to be ahead of us by six months, right? Mm -hmm. They're in a, their fiscal year starts earlier than ours. Well, but they'll <clears throat> they'll know what they're going to get based yeah. on the previous calendar year. Based on the years. previous calendar year, it's the only thing we have to work with, yeah. right? Yeah. The town doesn't have uh, a variable uh, input, variable you know, model like we do. I mean. Right. We're, we're just subject to how much power yeah. is being used. Yeah, I, I bring it up only because when we talk fiscal right. years now, we have to be careful what we communicate right. to the town because we're a different. Well, I think that the town, certainly a town of Ready, and I know wanted stability in the sense of knowing what the number was. They didn't necessarily, until a little bit later on, start talking about whether it's bigger or smaller than what they've been receiving. And we had to obviously add that component uh, to the equation as well. So it's not just predictability. But it's you know, predictability with a, a reasonable number yep. that uh, doesn't shock them too much, yep. using an electrical term. Oh, well, so well, right? <laughs> yeah. I think so. What we're doing again is we're sending these to the cab for feedback, and I think Vivek also it would be I think it would be a mistake to say we're asking to pick one and that that's the one that the board is going to consider. I think we want we want to get feedback on the suite of options. And then our board is just going to, we're just going to have to take a decision, um, hopefully at the February meeting, uh, if we can, to move on from this issue, knowing that if things change in the future, then we can, we can change it. But it's just, you know, it's, I think we should move it along. And, and I hope that you all will, 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 although I take your point, Phil, is that we can move all three of these and, and Colleen's point about the hard work that was put into them and move all three down to the, the cab and go from there. So, and, and go ahead, Tom. Yeah, uh, I I couldn't understand earlier. So, has the cab seen these before or any of the other back data? Because um, well, the reason I'm asking, if they haven't, it would seem to me that someone, the, the cab, sitting down and reviewing them without the benefit of, you know, what we heard today here, and unless we expect Vivek to bring that back, I mean, there's a lot of objectives it, it, and so they're going to need more than just the three options. I guess is my point. They'll get all that from. Yeah, they. The, the memo that I had sent out with all the objectives that Wendy just read, that that's the preface it, that would get forwarded with the. Um, yeah, the, but I mean, just if, if they're going to have an intelligent discussion, I would think if they have questions, wouldn't you want someone that can answer them as opposed to? Well, I think you're going well, to be there. I mean, that's the thing. Oh, well, you'll be at that meeting, right? Oh, okay, yeah, right. Okay, yes, yeah, that's really yeah. And they can yeah, and they're going to call, call her and then Colleen staffs those yeah, meetings too. Yeah, right. Right. So. I mean, unless there's anything else, I'm, I'm, we have a motion and a second on moving these along. I, I would say I'm ready for a vote unless you sure. anybody no, disagrees. So, yeah. Yeah. so all, second. All, all in favor. We did a motion okay. and a second. Okay. Okay. All in favor of the motion. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. All against. So we have five out uh, as as written. Thank you very much, Wendy and Colleen, for your hard work on that. Good, good discussion, Mr. Chairman. And and you, Phil. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so next. Uh, is we have a, a potential tweak to the evaluation process for the general manager and Dave would you like to discuss sure what and Tom I know both have a HR expertise and did some work uh, on, a, on on a tweak to the process that we've been using that yep yeah and this uh, started a couple months ago and we started thinking about how our performance evaluation system of the general manager is a little outdated, could be more effective. But one of the big things is that we only talk about it once a year in an official way. And the trends in HR are going, saying, keeping the performance evaluation conversations closer to when the performance happened. So that's one, one big thing. The other big thing is the the putting numbers, number ratings, or number ratings really stifle conversation, and um, and also combining uh, salary conversations and pay conversations with performance discussions in that same meeting uh, can also stifle conversation. So it's more about dialogue. It's more often, uh, and also incorporates some uh, specific goals that the board in collaboration with the general manager think are a high priority for that current year. So those those are the big things. Then that was my big concept. Now, Tom, being an HR uh, expert, um, 
Ooh. has taken <laughs> taken this a little further, and I think I'll pass it to Tom at this point because Tom spent more time on this document that we're looking at now. I don't know if people here can see it, but maybe we, we, maybe we don't need the document. We could talk it through, Tom. I don't, uh, maybe. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Does everybody have a? I guess everyone. Yeah, it's I not in the board book, so we should yeah. probably yeah. rectify yeah. that. Yeah. No, I know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, so as Dave said, I mean, basically, uh, what a lot of companies have recognized, this has been a process over the last several years around what an effective review is. And uh, Can we hold one second? I mean, is it possible we do have this as, it's a PowerPoint, right? Is it yeah, possible? It's a I know it's a little last minute here, but you mean we could maybe throw it up on the screen? Yeah, that's what I mean. We could yeah. throw it up yeah. on the screen. I mean, it was a PowerPoint presentation. Sorry to put you on the spot, Tracy. Yeah. Sorry. It's helpful for focus, so people are almost literally <laughs> on the same page. Yeah. While that uh, is going on, one of the – could I ask a question? Please. <clears throat> I think I, I like it, and I like yep. the process. But the, one of the questions I have is, do, does the board then have to agree on sort of what the one, two, and three goals are, as opposed to, you know, all of us sort of chickens coming in and going, I want this one, I want that one, yeah. I want that one. The answer so is I, yes. So yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. So and there should be very few. We, we absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah. Closure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Closure and the critical brevity. few, as we like to say. The critical few. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, if you think about it, the board is actually the manager here, uh, this is, you know, the one up. So what, what we do is present a couple of, of three goals. Uh, but as a group, so yeah, so we do have to say, okay, what are the? And the the other caveat is, I think we need to, uh, if uh, Colleen hasn't reviewed the, her contract, yeah, we have to make sure that it ties in with her contract mm -hmm. uh, in a way that um, doesn't <coughs> negate what your contract is. I mean, no, no, right. No, 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 so, so it's just a couple pieces I think that need yeah. to be. How would it? Um, can I ask a question? What are you concerned about, John, with the contract? What's well, how would it affect whatever the language is in the contract. I actually haven't read the contract in a long time, uh, but I think we had something in there yeah, about, about mutually agreed, uh, mutually agreed, and yearly reviews. So if we're going to change it, we need to make sure right. it gets embedded in the contract, so that Colleen is comfortable with it as well. Yeah. Right. So maybe I don't think we're going to change year. We're not recommending changing the yearly review, just quarterly and rolling it up to a yearly review. So we're just adding to it, but maybe maybe it needs to be change a contract. I don't know. Well, yeah, maybe. Dave and I had uh, the thought process was because it's new is to, it, I think you had ma mentioned, Colleen, uh, maybe uh, we can take up offline, take some time and just walk through it a little because, I mean, it, you should have more questions being the person that, you know, is in the process. So, uh, uh, Dave, I think we could do that, right? Oh, yeah. Walk an hour, just kind of walk through the... And then if there needs to be a board vote, we could do it at the next meeting and not... not I, don't, I don't think we're... There's nothing we're acting on tonight. We're discussing it tonight. Yep. Yeah. So we'd act on it at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we need to adjust the lighting as. Uh, it's know. behind you, Rebecca. Be behind time. you, Rebecca. Yeah. There's yep. a, this one here or this one? Yeah. Right yeah. 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 In them all. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as David highlighted, so the, the up there is kind of the, uh, you know, the old and the new. So, you know, this isn't, you know, true exactly in every company, but there, there's a lot of statistical data to suggest that for most companies, I mean, if you ask any company uh, how great their performance <laughs> yeah, review process is, <laughs> yep, there you, go. Uh, you know, largely, uh, largely they're, uh, they're not very effective. So uh, the idea here is to impact uh, the business uh, and uh, the, uh, I'm <laughs> having trouble reading because I can't see. <laughs> um, um, so let me see if I can. Give you my glasses, but I <laughs> no. It's just I can't see. No, I can't see. I can't see. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know. Um, let me. I think I can find here. No, I can just. Oh, here it is. Here. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. It's easier. Here. You go, Tom. Oh, okay. okay. It's nice to have mood lighting, but um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the whole idea is to is to really to s s simplify the process. Uh, you know, I think some statistics showed for as far as being time consuming, the current process and companies manage to spend on average a couple of hundred hours of, of time. And so this is intended to be quick, smooth, efficient, and uh, 
you know, moving from once a year to multiple feedback opportunities. I mean, the the pace of change in organizations is such. You know, you can, a goal set in January, you hardly ever, you know, remains static for 12 months. So this provides uh, flexibility uh, and multiple opportunities for dialogue and for communication. Uh, the old process focuses on past behavior, and what we're saying is we really want to you know, talk about that, but really, how can we improve current performance and, and uh, the business results? Uh, ratings focused, uh, Dave talked about that. This is really results and development focused. Uh, and I think a lot of studies suggest that the old system is adversarial, right? I mean, the manager's t talking to the employee, they've already written their view, so there really isn't much room for negotiation or change. So this is meant to be a collaborative process and really uh, focus also on team success, not just purely the individual performance. It's that That's what adds value. Uh, and a lot of the, you know, a lot of reviews typically under the old process tend to be uh, looking at improvement needs only, and this is really built on, you know, strengths building. I think, I think you even may use it here, because there's a strengths finder that a lot of companies are using now that uh, really say you can make more improvement uh, focusing on what you do well as opposed to, you know, hours of, you know, working on my your, your things that you don't do so well. And uh, it's really about the agility piece. So uh, because of the change, and certainly RMLD is going through this with all of the change in you know, energy uh, sources and, and, and opportunities. So we need a process that can uh, be uh, flexible and uh, agile. So all of this, I think, is what we get out of the quarterly check-in. OK, so what, uh, what does it look like? Uh, in, in some of this, uh, Dave and I talked about we can uh, put this into a, a form online or otherwise, but the, the, the big pieces are, so first is it's a goal review and project review. And I won't read all of these because you, you have them up there and you have a handout, but it's basically to take the commissioner suggested and agreed upon goals, which are two or three, as well as the focus areas, you know, the I call running the railroad that Colleen has to do that we probably aren't always privy to, and to be able to review those, uh, you know, clarify, uh, review help with obstacles and challenges. Maybe there's some things the board can suggest to be supportive. Uh, modify goals. Uh, there are going to be some goals that get set that may lose uh, their effectiveness because they become out of date or because you know we're not able to execute for different reasons. Part of this is an acknowledgement uh, piece of successes and accomplishments. Uh, also, new goals. I mean, the process, you, I don't think, would include adding new goals as a, as a normal ritual. But if we take a goal off the plate, maybe that there's something else in its place that would make sense. Uh, and again, all of this is the focus, uh, as Dave has mentioned a few times, is around the dialogue and the discussion. It's not about here's what we want you to do and you know go forth and do it. Uh, and I think the role of the commission is here is really to be it's really a classic coaching and uh, you know uh, development support role, right? How can we be helpful given the you know the challenges that you're facing and uh, you know the work ahead of us. Uh, and then lastly, if there's, which there always is, some lessons to be learned from the, either that process or from the first review, we, uh, you know, we look at those, uh, you know, and, and talk about them. Uh, so stop me if there are questions. Uh, so the number two is, there's a little overlap with it, but number two is really just to take a pause because I think we've seen when Colleen has done her, her self-assessment, you know, it's amazing how many <laughs> things that we knew about kind of, but I mean, it's just, uh, you know, when she articulates all of those soft savings, hard savings. So this is a way to say rather than just wait 12 months and have a real dump of it, let's talk about during the year what's what's accomplished, you know, celebrate those successes and, and be sure. Because behind that is also a lot of hard work. You know, those just don't happen. You know, they're not just uh, things that she outsources. So we want to also be appreciative of that, you know, that is part of the uh, the job that she has as general manager. Uh, next is, uh, so development and learning. And, you know, this would be different uh, at Colleen's level, but still not inappropriate. Uh, so here it's more about, you know, 
a lot of this may be driven by Colleen because she's the expert here in terms of the industry. She's already well plugged in, but there may be some things that she sees as necessary and appropriate given the change in technologies or changes in the industry. Uh, and so we want to talk about those and make sure she's, uh, you know, because a lot of times the, the development piece gets uh, minimized, uh, certainly in the old process because you know, most of the time is spent arguing over, you know, whether you did the goal or didn't do the goal and, you know, the rating and so forth. Uh, and I would see this as an opportunity for uh, Colleen also to uh, ask if she's getting, you know, the right feedback, helpful feedback, and uh, yeah, too much feedback, so, because uh, uh, we also have to be cognizant, unlike, you know, uh, other businesses, you know, uh, uh, our role as board, you know, we, we don't reach into the you know the tactical and shouldn't operational side uh, as, as other you know companies may be structured so it's really about we want to be helpful and uh, but so again we want to be sure we as our role as commission is we make sure we, we tap into that uh, question um, Can I make a comment on sure that? because I'm glad you mentioned that. yeah <coughs> I mean I like the whole process I really yeah. do um, the only thing that uh, <coughs> seemed a little strange to me is that so from a corporation perspective, this is great. You got a manager and a team, and yep. you're part of a bigger manager yep. and team yep. format, and they all kind of stack together to yep. form a corporation. But I'm not aware of any corporations whose board of directors does this for the CEO. Or am I incorrect? Do they do that in your experience? Yeah, I don't know, Dave. I don't know if you have any. Um, I'd say generally not. And some of that is it's you know. Isn't to say it wouldn't be appropriate, but boards, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah no, boards, no, no uh, question, yeah. yeah, they generally, uh, they do the, you know, they have a, as you know, they'll have a um, compensation committee and they'll do the financial right. review. But yeah, no, it, um, and you know, I think this. Uh, so I don't know if you did you see this as. Uh, I agree with you. So it's I, not. I think it's interesting. I yeah. think uh, the applicability internal to a corporation yeah. or a company is. Is really a good thing to yeah. do, and that's why yeah. it's here. Yeah. Uh, but at, at the senior level, I'm not sure. And you mentioned about you know, our responsibility as a board. Yeah. Uh, we have two responsibilities really. One is to hire the general manager, yeah. and the second is to um, you know make approval of capital and yeah. things like that. Uh, for the most part, those are the two major things. Yeah. So this kind of moves us into a, a different sphere of influence with the general manager, which I, I'm all for because yeah. we, and I think making make it happen sooner rather than later yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. But I, I just wanted to sort of clarify that. Yeah, it is, it, the there's a little yeah. bit of gray here. Uh, I think uh, in terms of where we started with, I think uh, I think we can make, I think we can shape this to account for, and that's why I think we do need to make sure there's a lot of dialogue around, you know, because it, it would be easy to take the board hat on and put the, you know, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the supervisor <laughs> hat. So, no. but I think there's enough goodness about this that we, we won't get into, uh, you know, debating over, you know, point systems and, and really around, really, I think if anything comes out of it, you know, as a board, how can we help? You know, you're you're running the railroad, but you know we're we're here to help. What can we do? What do you need? And uh, yes, Vivek. Yeah, no, I, I I like the concept of having a structure like this. The only question is that in most organizations, if you are setting an organizational goal, it's a trickle down, right? Right. So if you have a system that works for the CEO, then it trickles down. So I'm just curious, what is the system that RMLD uses for Hamid and for Chuck and Wendy? And if this is different from that, I don't know what that system is. So if this is different from that, you know, it's, uh, it, I, I, I think we should recognize that because I, a good way to do what you really want to do is it should be trickled down, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this GM's goals trickle down to goals for individuals down, you know, that, that's, that's how it works. And I think that's the spirit of what you guys are trying to do. So, but my sense is you, you'll have one system for the general manager and one for the rest of the organization. And so, so you just need to recognize yeah, that. Yeah, I think the trickle down piece, so that's cascading goals. Yeah. Uh, so I think that would happen. We haven't really, 
talk because that's a separate. The goal setting is really a separate process, right? Well, I think you're no, saying you're, you're saying, from you're the saying talking about the process of the evaluation. Process, yeah, the evaluation. Yeah. Process. Well, the yeah. goal setting process. I just wanted to take so if the the thing that you want to make sure gets cascaded is your goals, right? I mean, your development plans are going to be different for every person, for example, right? And their needs and, and challenges are different. But as far as the major, if you think about the major work, is usually structured around goals and projects, right? So yeah, that's no, I, uh, yeah. that's uh, that piece is covered through a separate goal setting process. Where, and Colleen, I assume, has that already in place here. I I do think. I mean, the goal here would be to let this be the process. But uh, Dave and I haven't talked about this. But I think that before, uh, especially where the year has already begun, I would think that we would want to do is use this as a process for the board to review Colleen and then we can evaluate it and we'll know after a few iterations if we're getting the intended benefit out of it and then we can talk about how do we move this into uh, rather That's than right. moving the whole organization through would be my suggestion. It, it, I, just to weigh in, maybe we can take some of this offline and, and bring it back to the next meeting um, and wrap up the discussion at this point. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, but yeah, or just move through it quickly. Yeah, let me. Yeah, so yeah, let me because then we can. And it's important for calling this. So next is uh, you know really uh, a company or team update. So that's really what's going on new in the organization. That uh, you know uh, sometimes we'll get talked about anecdotally, but this is just a a placeholder if, if that's there or maybe there's a strategic opportunity that Colleen wanted to uh, share or discuss with the board. Uh, next slide please. Um, and uh, and then really it's a wrap up so it's really summarizing you know uh, and I say memorialize because even though we're trying to get away through forms and paper you know the the limitation in a lot of meetings and discussions is you know if there's some key things you want to do you do want to be able to uh, capture them so you can talk about them next time you gather, especially where there's some intervening time. Uh, and, the, you know, there would be, a, at that point, the opportunity for the general manager to talk about perspectives, and then you set your ne next meeting. Um, the important note is, again, it's a dialogue. It's not a lecture. It's not a, uh, you know, uh, command and control. It's really about active listening on both spots and construction feed constructive feedback. Uh, I won't go through the next slide. The next slide is really just a timeline, and it really there's really two pieces that's really you know the process would be to do this you know January April July and October probably try to build it around if the board agrees around the uh, board meetings and uh, you know as we've talked about before we'll have the, the qualitative feedback will replace the you know the hundred point scale system that we have and then separate but important it ties into the question that uh, you know John raised about so we still have to have a, an annual compensation review but that'll be based on you know the outcomes of the check-ins the you know we'll look at the as we always do the, the salary benchmarks for the general manager within the industry and other you know the financial health and economics which is always part of it. Okay great thank you so for we assist. should we work on having this be ready for some type of action item as needed Colleen for next next meeting? <clears throat> What's that again, Dave? I mean, I guess it uh, moving this to an action item for the next meeting. Like, I think the action item we're offline. Dave and I will meet with uh, Colleen, and then uh, we'll bring it back to uh, the board in terms okay. of. I think the uh, the only other thought is, you know, from the timing of it, if we want to go with it immediately, or if we think we need to do because we have that six month piece yeah. that we I have. I was just to about to bring that up. Yeah. I think at our next meeting we need to finish the evaluation for the six month yes. period of that Colleen too. in our next meeting. Correct. So it's done using the old process, yeah. Yeah. the paper, before we move yep. into this. Yeah, and, and yeah, I would say great. my experience with this is and not that we wouldn't be thoughtful about it, but you know, the rigor that we put into a, a year, an annual review, uh, you know, I, I think. It's all commensurate with you know the amount of time we're looking. So we're looking at a six-month window. So sure. I think we can size it appropriately. <clears throat> okay. okay. And yeah. just maybe we can briefly discuss any like the goals question. Is there? Can we get a consensus and then maybe at the next meeting <coughs> vote on three or four goals or whatever we think that we would like as a board to move and. and if I may, I you may. we almost came to this uh, one of our other meetings. I I think we should all sort of step back yep. as commissioners, come up with the th what we think are the three top ones because yep. we all have different yeah. 
things, maybe have five, you know, that we can rank it so we can pick three that we have consensus on yep. mm -hmm. anyway before we would feed into this. Would that be okay? Because I, I'm not sure we can vote on it at the next meeting. I think we can assemble everything sure. and, you know, um, then we could s circulate them, I think, outside of the, no. Ideally, we do it at the meeting, but yes, we could, we could, we could assemble a list offline, but the meetings are where right. we should, you know, kind of deliberate okay. on them. If anybody has anything now, I know we've had a couple of dis preliminary discussions. I only have two, but you, if anybody else wants to. I, think about it. No. Okay. I had them, but there are, I wrote them down last time. Yeah, I, I, just with the kilowatt hour sales being just a major issue with our payment to the town, I don't have a fully baked goal, but it just, my idea is that a major goal would be how can we increase kilowatt hour sales in more creative ways, you know, so we could just let, you know, roll with the, the I know we're not doing that now, we're doing so many things, but uh, I think that's a major priority, so. One of the, uh, I left it in the car, but it's, uh, uh, I'll, I'll circulate it. So one of the things, is, some of it's I think already being done, I guess it's more about the packaging of it in uh, the report out. So my thought was we met, we have a strategy meeting a number of months or years ago, remember in the uh, boardroom around revenue streams. You know, we talked about service opportunities, and I thought it was a very good discussion in light of the, I mean, the big driver here is kilowatt sales, right? So we, uh, there's a lot of things that impact it in a negative way, even though they're highly efficient in energy, uh, green and, uh, and so forth. So uh, with Colleen's, uh, you know, thoughts, you know, put together kind of a scorecard of what are the three or ten or nine or seven uh, impacts. I mean, you, uh, Chuck talked a little bit about them, things that, you know, like the electric vehicle thing. So let's talk about uh, and maybe create some new ones or give Colleen and her team time to noodle it and say, here's five or six or whatever the right number is even of uh, revenue stream opportunities and put a scorecard together and we can just use that as a, a goal throughout the year to kind of track because I, I think uh, it's like any business that gets to, you know, to a point where they're kind of flat in sales, right? If you don't, you know, you're not this growing, is, you're dying. right? Yeah. So that would they be probably my, have limited ability to, you know, affect demand. I think that we have a lot of good programs for heat pumps and other things, electric car charging. So that we, I completely agree with you. Yeah. Can I ask a yeah. So the goal would be to come up with the programs, not necessarily go door to door and force people to. No, we want to go door to door. It's <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. not going to be sure. a good yeah. scorecard. No. Just no. telling you. No. How many doors you go per month? <laughs> is the metric we're looking for. <laughs> well, we're going to be equipping you with vacuum cleaners. It's getting quantitative too, yeah. Only because <laughs> it's an adjacent uh, business. Know, the primary goal is to have a, a reliable electric yes. service. Okay? Yes, indeed. Uh, all of the programs that we offer to try to focus on long-term planning right. is essentially, you know, I can't drag the horse and drink the water. We we do a lot of work. We're, right. we're creating programs, and sometimes... Yeah, no, 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 no. That's and you also can't control if there's a recession and things go down 5%. So. Well, I was just didn't know what Tom's scorecard, if it was going door to door, and I was <laughs> becoming a GM to a salesman. So <laughs> Okay. So okay. I think maybe the way to do this is to have, we'll do the offline thing, we'll get a list of 10, and we'll bring yeah. it to the next meeting, we'll winnow it down to four, yeah. and we'll do it that way. And um, I it wasn't with that. Does that sound like a good process? Yeah. We'll, yes. yes. We'll do a, a list offline, next meeting we'll get it down to four, and we'll move yeah. on. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So let's... Dave, as a, just to add to that, is yeah. there anything that is inconsistent with our processes here? Could we get them all to Tracy or whatever, yep. get them summarized and get the complete list out to everybody, then we could come to the board meeting with having seen them all. And yeah, I have to check the open meeting law thing. We don't want to be emailing each other about what we think the goal should be, so maybe they all go to Tracy or maybe they all go to me Yeah, no, I'm just saying one get, list or whatever. Yeah, but then get the, uh, I think the added step is if everyone had the complete list, not for discussion prior to the meeting, but just to so think look about at it. them it's and then for otherwise sure. you're going to have to yeah. do it real time here. Yeah, right? no, which and is very intense. Yes, right? yeah, and I think, can I say one thing? I think we really want to get uh, advice from Colleen and her team about yes. what what does she think? You know, because yep. she's closer to you know what's happening. Of course, here. yeah. What the, does the, she think the priority yeah. should be well, for this coming mentioned. year? That's really yeah. there should be mutually agreed upon goals. Right. Well, and and it, I, I, sorry, I, I think it trickles down from the mission of the organization. Right. right? Yeah. And so whatever the plan is, so like what Colleen said. Okay, so 
focused on that and then say this is the goals are consistent well, with that. What I would like to see if we could and, and we send everything into Tracy for example yep. and it's just put into a one page matrix yep. with all the goals yeah. and then we are we rank individually one to ten so we have one right. page to look at at our next meeting or whatever yeah. and say you thought of this and you thought of yeah. this and and are there any consistencies here yeah. that just jump out at you as being yeah and, and I think overall we know that there's a hundred wonderful engineering pro programmatic capital planning things that are going on and this is sort of maybe there's some things out of the box that we add to it but we know all those things are going on and we, we don't want to step on those or, or, or say that anyway so yeah, uh, we'll we'll bring them in for the next meeting. We'll do it there. I have okay. a request though. Please go to the next. Yes. Um, so my contract says I have to get your approval to transfer some uh, vacation time over because the last yeah. quarter of 2019, the workload and extenuated circumstances was pretty tough. So I plan to take it. I had to cancel a vacation. Yeah. I'll do it first quarter. We need a motion we for the next meeting. What, what is the time, Colleen? Wendy needs it uh, approved. Times? Okay. How much time is it? Can we do it? Do we need a motion for the next meeting? Because it's not on the agenda now. But can we just do it as a? Do we need a motion and a? Phil, you're the resident. Uh, I'm looking uh, up the story. He's looking it up. You know, he's looking it up. Huh? I'm looking it up. I gotta remember what the so we don't really. But what in what form does the approval need to come? And does it if it's a, if it's a board vote then it needs to be on the agenda? That's that's, that's where I'm coming from, and that's why I'm thinking maybe we do it at the July at the Jan 23rd meeting unless there's a, a burning need to do it sooner. I think, I think it can be appropriately done here. Can it? Yeah, I think it can be appropriately okay. done here. Master of the Senate over we, here. Uh, authorize the general manager to uh, move any unused um, vacation time from uh, calendar year 2019. To uh, the first quarter of 2020. I got it right. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. If second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Thank you, Phil, for getting something done. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, is that direct? <laughs> it's, a, it's a zing on. It's a zing on myself. <laughs> okay. Well, what about the rest oh, of the board? Yeah. <laughs> it's a zing on myself, not well, anybody else. One could read it to the rest of the board members too. Yeah, okay, I didn't mean it that way. Thank you yeah, for man. getting it. <laughs> Well, anyway, thank you, Phil. Yeah, thank everybody. Thank you, Dave. All right, so let's move on to uh, to. Well, thank me for providing an easy one for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one is easier than uh, a few of the okay. other things. Chuck, you wanna? Sorry to have this go on for so long. <laughs> Chuck's a bang banger. Next time we should maybe give ourselves 15 minutes per agenda item. At most. And just like. And for like a like an electric shock goes off. Oh, that's where you see it. I mean, I don't have a choice because I got two more going on the behind the meetings. The meetings went one hour, and that was it. I know. Well, <laughs> well, the, the old story, Dave. The meeting could be as long as you want it to be. The question is how many questions you're going to allow. So you I know it's true. I mean, I probably should have anyway. Chuck, Ooh, I think you're fine. No. Well, now that the board has cratered my performance uh, <laughs> evaluation for the year by sending. Uh, my resource on vacation and she's not going to be able to do that door-to-door uh, -door solicitation um, just to put things quickly in perspective um, if we can achieve a target of 1700 electric vehicles as second vehicles uh, within the RMLD service territory for uh, residential customers to commute with that is roughly 1% of our retail load so I, th I think that's an eminently achievable. How many again? Uh, Seventeen hundred electric vehicles. How many do you figure there are now? Uh, a couple of hundred. I think we've got about something between two fifty and four hundred. We're trying to in the four towns. Uh, in, in the four towns. Um, so it's doable. Say, just remember that if they assign that as a goal, that becomes your goal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'm look and <laughs> I'm trickle down. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I wrote it. I yeah. wrote it down. That's the. I'm, I'm very much a matrix management uh, type of uh, approach to things, which means that I am going to conscript the general manager as my sales delivery team for that objective. Let us know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better believe it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the last time uh, I did this was uh, at the CAB meeting in December. Uh, it went about an hour and a half. 
I am going to attempt to do this in about 15 minutes and hit some highlights. And the reason is that uh, I still have uh, two more uh, presenters uh, behind me, and I have to deal with them tomorrow morning as opposed <laughs> to the commission. So uh, we're, we're going to fly through this very quickly. The, the first report is the traditional uh, monthly report, and I can summarize it by saying things are very stable, or have been. Uh, one of the things uh, I pulled the power supply team to, together today and asked them uh, to begin tracking uh, how the volatility in oil and gas prices is translating to uh, market price and what our exposure is and how much uh, we're seeing as an impact from the uh, current, uh, we hope, uh, short-term uh, insecurities in the uh, global uh, energy markets and uh, our exposure is very limited uh, the TFA has bought us to uh, I think it's about 98 percent of uh, our load uh, we are currently enjoying tropical uh, weather here in the Northeast uh, so we're not exposed to extreme cold snaps and uh, price volatility from uh, those effects and uh, you would just mention what TFA stands for so Knows. That's the uh, transaction financial uh, activity. It's basically uh, the tool that we use to uh, make elections on power. And essentially what we're looking at uh, when we do that is whether the forward price is below the four or five year average uh, for that period. And if it is, then we elect to make some purchases. And uh, I'll be showing those in the second presentation. So if we want to begin, um, these are the very traditional slides. And what you're seeing is that we're going to finish uh, the year uh, below our budget uh, expectations and in uh, very good shape. I believe that uh, you're going to hear some of the numbers uh, further on uh, this evening. Uh, in terms of the impact of where we've actually finished uh, compared to what was budgeted a year ago. So, <clears throat> um, that could be a goal for Despite the current disadvantages to my presentation, uh, we'll slog forward. Um, the, uh, the energy uh, package that we look at breaks into um, energy costs, capacity costs, and transmission costs. And all we're doing with these next three slides is showing uh, essentially where uh, the uh, below market or, or below budget uh, activity has been. Uh, it was early in the year, um, and uh, as we get towards the uh, end of the year here, you can see that uh, our cumulative differential uh, is showing at about two and a half million dollars below what was budgeted. Uh, the budget is based on the forward price curve. It includes uh, volatility risk. It includes uh, forward price uncertainty. And when we get into the actual market or we lock things down through uh, some of our transactional uh, purchases, uh, we're able to buy uh, risk unweighted uh, power as opposed to risk weighted uh, power. So. Uh, these are the uh, energy savings that we've experienced. I believe the next slide is capacity savings. Uh, and you can see that uh, we're looking at fairly hefty uh, cost reductions there. And uh, then the last side is the transmission. Uh, most of the transmission savings are due to uh, sub-transmission uh, costs. Uh, part of this is actually the savings uh, that we've achieved through use of the peaker unit and the uh, battery uh, energy storage uh, system, BESI, what, I can't remember what the Y is, <coughs> but we changed from BES to BESI. Um, so those impacts are in here because they weren't factored into the budget. But basically, we had a good year. That's the upshot of that. So, 
uh, <coughs> this just shows the, the resources that we've used throughout the year, uh, where they are. Uh, the important piece, I think, in this slide is that uh, the bulk of those resources are going away in the next two years. The bilateral contracts that are the red zone in the middle, those are expiring. That would be the Exelon and the next Terra contracts. Uh, the next era, uh, we lost one piece of as of December 31st, and uh, December 31st of 2020, we will lose uh, the rest of the next era bilateral and the Exelon bilaterals. So what happens? We have to replace them, and that's the next presentation. All right. Excellent segue. All right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you got sucked in on that one. Yeah. <laughs> he told me to ask that question. <laughs> So I'm going to try and go fairly quickly on the highlights of this as opposed to the uh, hour and a half that I subjected uh, Vivek and, and John to uh, during the last presentation. So basically uh, what we're looking at uh, is our portfolio. This is uh, historically uh, what our portfolio has uh, been comprised of. Um, for uh, the the past, uh, what do we got in here? Twelve years? Uh, there's ten years. It's the makeup of power supply uh, costs, capacity, energy, and transmission. And you see how those kind of change throughout those ten years uh, timeline. Basically, what you you've seen is that we have a a bubble of capacity costs and. Uh, 2018, they were 36 percent of our portfolio. Uh, they're dropping back down. They were 34 percent uh, for the next year, and they're going to continue to fall. 2020, they went from a high in 2018 of about ten dollars a kW month uh, to 2023, which we're still looking out towards, at about three dollars and fifty cents, three dollars and eighty cents kW month. So we're we're looking at capacity is falling off. Transmission is continuing to grow as a cost. Energy's just been very stable as a component. Um, so uh, we've seen uh, the the energy costs drop as the uh, cost per uh, uh, kilowatt hour uh, went from fifty five dollars to forty five dollars a megawatt hour, and that just shows in the energy price. But our costs have been fairly stable. We had a high period in uh, 2018. Uh, 2019 it dropped, and 2020 we're looking at stable. And after that, it's anybody's guess what we're going to be up against. So if we go to the next slide, this is the forward looking slide. And that dotted area in the top is our open position. That's market power. That's open. Those are decisions that we get to make. Do we want to stay in market power, take whatever the marginal uh, price is? Uh, it is the lowest cost and the most volatile. Mm -hmm. Or we can buy contract resources. We can buy short-term resources. We can buy longer-term resources. We can buy non-carbon resources uh, and pay a non-carbon premium for them. Uh, most of our investment uh, of late has been in non-carbon uh, components for the portfolio, including the option on RECs going forward so that whatever the legislature decides, whenever the legislature decides it, we will be able to uh, respond and be compliant. Um, there are three lines on this graph. The lower line uh, on the graph is the original RPS. It's there for information. It's been uh, superseded by uh, the clean energy standard now. Uh, the RPS was, I believe, 50% uh, by 2050 of uh, renewable. The new clean energy standard is 80% of the portfolio by 2050, non-carbon. Uh, the focus has, has moved to greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide reduction. So that's where that is. The gold line is uh, what we proposed uh, through uh, Representative Golden, and that is the municipals coming on board, catching up to 
uh, where the standard is and then uh, matching the IOU's uh, commitment or standard uh, going forward. Um, what you see here with the light blue, uh, the medium blue, and the dark blue uh, are the non-carbon commitments that RMLD now has. And essentially, uh, we meet every standard through 2029. So we are well positioned. We now have uh, a nine-year, almost 10-year uh, compliance built into or baked into our portfolio. So if we did nothing else, we would be compliant for 10 years. But we aren't stopping here. Okay, we've already uh, made a commitment. We've presented to the commission that uh, as we grow our retail load with electric vehicles and heat pump technology, we will serve that load through new non-carbon resources so that we are not uh, adding to the problem going forward. So that's the integrated resource uh, piece of it. We're making sure that uh, the whole portfolio ties together. Um, and then we get into the choices that we have to make going forward. And there are any number of options that we have for doing that. Short-term bilateral contracts. Uh, we have a proposal from one vendor uh, for a non-carbon portfolio. They will sell us whatever uh, we would like to buy, whatever blocks we need, and they will guarantee to provide us the carbon zero carbon emission certificates to go with that. They are not renewable energy certificates. They are just a certificate that guarantees the resources non-carbon. And that will comply with whatever comes out of the golden rule. So um, we're well positioned and we have a lot of options. I will also point out that until we commit to certain prices, we also have a lot of risk because until we know what price we're going to commit to, until we know what committing to that price does when we embed it in our portfolio and our rates, we don't know what we've uh, locked in for uh, future rate adjustments. Yes, sir. It, the, uh, I forget the, the consortium, whatever, that we joined, you know, that, uh, you know what I mean. Energy New England? Yeah, do they, uh, do they help us with this? So that do we get benefits in this area? For yes, we do. Um, they're out there currently uh, negotiating with counterparties, uh, exploring the market that's out there, and bringing opportunities to us. I believe that there are currently three open uh, contracts uh, that we have been invited to participate in and one that has resolved itself and that uh, we're committed uh, to going forward. So they're the bulk of uh, where we look for uh, our portfolio, but we continue to be active ourselves uh, in the market and, and do some bilateral uh, contract work. Some of that uh, is the TFA that we have. And that is a bilateral with NextEra, uh, where we watch the price, and uh, when it meets our requirements, we lock in uh, for those units. Yeah. So that's a nice benefit being involved in that. Yeah, Energy New England just helped us with the uh, NextEra deal, where it's, it was a combination of solar and nuclear, building the duct curve with the nuclear with the solar. And so uh, they do a good job working with everyone to create these um, carbon-free projects that, you know, some of them going forward will take four years to build. So you have to plan now and, and invest in projects that aren't even going to be built for four years. So um, we need companies like that to keep, keep it going. And there's a lot of legislative red tape, a lot of things that go with trying to get, you know, uh, permitting and all that type funding and everything for those projects. So we have a balance of market opportunities. For example, some of our hydro contracts uh, are contracts that we have secured bilaterally, i.e. directly with 
uh, the output uh, provider and some are ENE projects where we are one of multiple uh, municipal light plants uh, that are taking uh, some of the project off. So we, we've got a very good uh, balanced approach to uh, managing uh, our market activity. At least I feel that way. Um, I guess my evaluation uh, through Colleen will tell me whether that's working or not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next, please. So, um, So these, these are kind of the going down into the weeds slides, if you will, uh, for what you saw in the, in, in the previous one. And I'm going to kind of pass over these quickly. And uh, if in your own private reviews of these you come up with questions, please uh, feel free to um, uh, pass them along through normal channels and, and we'll get you some more information. We can also revisit this presentation uh, at another time. So, um, next, please. I'd like the hour and a half version that Vivek got. <laughs> got some notes here, too. <laughs> uh, we can do that. Um, uh, I said, I'll get it. We can uh, skip over uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, uh, and the next one. Okay. So, this is. Um, the experience that we had with uh, the TFA program. Uh, this was a pilot program that we did uh, beginning in 2017. We started to, to lock those down. Uh, when I came on board at the end of 2018, we, we did some more uh, of these transactions and uh, we've recently uh, locked down uh, another $9 million worth of, of these transactions uh, going forward. So they cover a, a number of years and they buy uh, in blocks of uh, peak or off-peak power for whatever months the pricing uh, looks at. We get forward price curves uh, on a monthly basis going out uh, two years. And so we're able to look and see uh, how the market is transacting and using that and working with NextEra, we make decisions about whether uh, it is advantageous to us to uh, lock in that power supply. So uh, it is a price mit uh, risk mitigation. Um, it puts downward pressure on power supply costs. That's what it's there for. That's its sole purpose is uh, to lock down lower prices. And does, um, does this become then the new standard for next year so that the budget now becomes this? I answered that question last month. <laughs> um, yes. What happens is as we make these deals uh, and in order uh, to keep pace with things, uh, we're doing this almost the same way that you're looking at changing the evaluation process. We keep moving the target. So once we've got these deals locked in, uh, we know their impact, we roll them into uh, the budget and we're getting quarterly budget updates from Energy New England. So that we change the target and the rate uh, going forward for the year. Um, it's very structured decision making. Right now I have an excellent team of analysts, but there's no guarantee uh, that that team is going to be there for the next 10 or 20 years. And so we have a structure uh, that we can tweak now while everybody's available to look at it, get it as optimal as possible, and then it's in place whatever happens uh, to the future. So it can either be a uh, backup uh, tool for us or uh, it can be a frontline tool. Uh, but it's there, it works, it's a second set of eyes on things, uh, and we're really very pleased uh, through the whole group with, with how this is performing. Um, so, um, and it is uh, the energy portion of our portfolio management, so capacity and 
transmission are still managed elsewhere. Um, and the answer to your question is yes, it secures lower uh, budget pricing and that gets carried forward. So, uh, next please. Okay, this is the uh, activity uh, to date. This is uh, by month, by year, uh, what we have already locked in and the value that it's been locked in at. And so we have uh, a total of almost $33 million of contract commitments going forward just under this protocol. So, uh, next please. So, we also ran another pilot program this past year. And this was a load following program. And the objective of the load following program was to take out load volatility risk and price volatility risk. It was to lock in a fixed price and NextEra was going to take uh, the uh, risk of misestimation of our load when we bid it into the market uh, onto their shoulders from ours. Um, it performed as uh, NextEra said that it would. Uh, we have no qualms there, but because we have more resources than most municipal light plants, we think we're able with our own eyes on it right now to be able to manage that. Now, this takes volatility out. As long as the market is tranquil, there's no volatility risk. So we're not seeing volatility risk for the next 24 months. One of the things we're looking at now uh, is this short-term volatility to see how dynamic does it get and where are the dollars flowing. We can use that as additional information to evaluate the benefits and the risk mitigation potential on the load following. But right now, uh, it is uh, the feeling within our group, um, primarily Zach, uh, that um, we can do as well uh, managing the portfolio ourselves without turning all of the risk mitigation over, that we can get a few more dollars out of the system uh, by doing it ourselves. No, no. So, can I just, so I think yeah. th this was an important point that was yeah. mentioned in the 90-minute presentation that the team feels that they'll do better than working with NextEra in the load following. Right? On, on the load following agreement yeah. Yeah. and the options to buy other yeah. products. So that was important. So yeah. I just want to emphasize that point. Good. We, we think that... Zach, with Zach wanted to make a comment too. I've been tracking that, so we'll have an update um, here, here soon with the March and December performance on that. So I've been running the numbers just to see what's, what could have happened um, in today's numbers, 2013 numbers, which was a high price time, and then with the low down product, which is an actual product as well. So we'll, we'll get to see that here soon. So this is a tool. NextEra has it. Um, we were both piloting it. They've learned a lot. We've learned a lot. Um, they're not terribly happy that we didn't renew. Uh, obviously, the, the transaction revenues to them are nice. But uh, this is something that uh, we can keep for the future and evaluate. And it may be at some point that this is a direction that we go. But the last two Sorry. points were the important ones. It operated below the budget projections, which is what they said it would do. We think we can outperform it. Nice. That's very impressive. And I'm yeah. betting Zach's employment that we'll do it. <laughs> We're going to set that as a goal for you. <laughs> <laughs> One more to, to note. Um, so with that load-falling product, uh, there's a price that is constant that they sell that
So, uh, next, please. So, I also put up uh, some uh, to date information on how our peak management programs have worked. We essentially have three we have the uh, natural gas generator, we have the uh, Bessie project, the battery energy storage, and we also have uh, customers participating in the Shred the Peaks program. And so uh, basically we've, uh, we've put those numbers up there as well as uh, how our solar choice programs uh, are doing. Um, keep in mind there are some negative numbers there for the Solar Choice 2. Those are timing issues when it came online, which they've been slowly rectifying. Uh, I believe 2020 they're going positive, mm -hmm. and we expect to see that uh, at the end of the project be a uh, positive outcome. But uh, total to date uh, is about $1.5 million in capacity and transmission savings. Nice. Good. Nice. And awesome. that's nice. over two years. I think when the gas turbines came online was uh, the gas turbine came online was I mean two years ago. Yes. So this is this is about two years worth of performance. And uh, the battery actually came online in May of this year. So one year on the on the battery. So we expect this number to grow over time. This is a net number, by the way. This isn't gross savings less what it costs to operate. This is the net savings value. So that's great. Great, nice um, stuff. Can yeah. I go backwards on my goals? <laughs> yeah, we, we need to have a you already did million it. five that's total year to date. <laughs> well, as much as you know. I would like to be presidential and be able to take credit for anything that's a positive outcome in my term, whether I had anything to do with it or not. Uh, these efforts were put in place before I got here. Uh, so uh, I, I will bask in the reflected glory of what <laughs> Hamid and his team did to get the gas turbine up. Uh, Tom Malola was the, the project manager for these. Um, Everybody in the Integrated Resources Department has been involved with the Shred the Peak program. So uh, this is a team effort. And uh, I, th I think that needs to be reflected. Um, next. That's it. That's it. That was the last one. OK. So <clears throat> less than 90 minutes. A lot less than 90 minutes. But in fairness, uh, I wasn't interrupted with as many questions from Vivek and John this time <laughs> as I was in the last So they were paying attention then? Yes, they were. I mean, this time. <laughs> um, can I make a comment? So one of the reasons, thank you, Chuck, you did a great job. Yep. One of the reasons why... And Zach. Very good. And Zach. Uh, one of the reasons why I asked Chuck to make this presentation, and all of those slides are on here if you want to look at it in detail, is we have the renewable policy that's still sitting there that we need to update. And I had said that, you know, we, we, we tried to change the words to sustainable for just the interim while we're waiting for the legislation to tell us what it is that we're going to need to do. But Chuck has demonstrated to you that whether it's the, R, the CES, the Golden Bill, whatever, that based on carbon, uh, we're meeting all of the requirements and taking credit for nuclear non-carbon that all of the ratepayers in the system have already invested all their money in, which is the whole concept of going, uh, you know, towards this bill. And then we play catch up and we go further. And you can look on the slide and it'll tell you exactly what the Golden Bill um, objectives are. So the question is. What would you like your board policy to say on the renewables? If you'd like me to revise it and have it match what Chuck has presented, I can do that and send it to you if you want to think about it. But, um, you know, right now it just says, you know, you're going to have a certain amount of renewables, which we are adding. So when you look at the golden... <coughs> If you look at the, the golden bill that he just 
provided you. And that's the bill that the meme supports that yeah, I'm gonna read it. hasn't passed, right? Um, so the G GGES shall set the minimum percentage of non-carbon emitting energy sold by each municipal light plant. The GGES begins at 7% in 2021 and goes to 80% by 2050. Non-carbon emitting shall be defined as energy from facilities using the following generation technologies to the extent that any RECs associated with the output are not sold. Qualified resources are as follows. Solar PV, solar thermal, hydroelectric, nuclear, marine or hydrokinetic energy, geothermal energy, landfill methane, anaerobic digestion gas, biomass fuel, wind energy, and other generation qualified for RPS or CES. So that's the criteria. Um, you know, I, I know here that we sell a lot of the RECs. There's a lot of solar that we actually don't even have the RECs. They were put into the economics when the vendor built the solar. But of the RECs that we sell, they go into projects to continue to meet these standards. So we have to remember that municipal utilities are the number one investors in clean power going forward. We are the ones that come up with the money to build these things. So that's where those rec money is going. So if you'd like me to, you know, try revising it to address this with these attached, I can send it, you can review it at your leisure, and we can make a decision. But that was the whole point of this presentation. I think it makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> yes. I and if legislation changes, yeah. guess what? When you change your policy, you can change it again. Yeah. One question. This talks about when you show the chart, you're saying we are already meeting the projections through 2029, mm -hmm. but does that account for the RECs? Or, but it doesn't say anything about the RECs, right? Because right now we don't. It's non carbon. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're meeting the non carbon standard, which is what we believe based on the fact that the clean energy standard is now in place and the golden bill is being debated, which is how municipals will be brought on board, that non-carbon is going to be the standard, and we're right. doing that. So, but for the non-carbon, are you, I, I presume this allows you to count only the ones for which you're not selling the RECs, right? No. We're it allows them to do it even if they're selling the RECs. Okay. Right? Yes. And the, the reason for that is those RECs that we're selling are part of decisions that were made before we were required to comply with the statute. Right. Now, we still do have those recs. We always have the option of retiring them instead of selling them. But we're sitting here talking about keeping our sales up. There's a concept called price elasticity. As you raise rates, customers get more attention to how much they're using and they tend to curtail some of their use. So we're very sensitive to how much price is changing and what we can do to keep price down while still getting those carbon reduction effects in our portfolio. We're, it's balance and that's what we're striving for. So. To, when we get the policy, we will... Meaning the Golden Bill if it passes. When yes. you say when we get the policy, you mean if the Golden <coughs> yeah, Bill passes. Right now, we, we're, we're writing it more on the Clean Energy Standards Act that's in place. The Golden Bill will mirror the clean, the clean Energy Standards. So what we're looking is to comply with those standards now. And we're doing a lot of good faith with the legislature by working to comply with a piece of legislation that's been on the table for almost a year at this point without action. And we're going forward to comply with the terms of that legislation. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a little confusing, I think, to some of us anyway. Maybe just to me. <laughs> Um, I've heard it said that we have 15% nuclear, right, for our multi-power supply. 
about that. About yeah. that. And then how much you say is non-carbon depends on whether you do or don't count the, sell, the sold wrecks. And if you do count the sold wrecks, uh, as the Golden Bill would allow you to, yeah. right? Well, now, wrecks only have to do with renewable. So right. even if you have the wrecks or don't have the wrecks, that plant is still non-carbon. So we're, we're not talking about right. renewable. We're talking about commitments to non-carbon. So it doesn't matter if you have the wrecks or not. Under the MLP way of looking at things. Every, every resource yeah. is a two-tiered test against the statute. First test, does it emit carbon? If it does not emit carbon, it is a non-carbon right. resource and counts against the clean energy standard. The next test is, does it have a Massachusetts qualifying renewable energy certificate? If it does, and we buy and retire that certificate, then it meets the renewable energy standard. So two separate tests for every resource. We count all the resources as being non-carbon. Right. We can take some of those and acquire wrecks and retire them, which then meets the renewable energy standard portfolio. But it is a two-tiered test. So the confusing part is in your uh, description of the GGS, uh, the Golden Bill, you put in a statement that only the wrecks which are not sold will be considered non-emitting carbon. So that's why I asked that question. Right, because if they're, if they're not sold, then it's renewable, not non, it's not qualified non-carbon. It's qualified renewable. But, but you're saying the rule is for non-carbon, right? I mean, the goal is non-carbon. And if everything that's non-carbon, irrespective of whether the, the wreck is sold or not, Correct. then you're in compliance with the Correct. objectives of the state. Right. If you right. want to have renewable on top of that, you can have renewable on top of that. That's the point of the no, board no. policy that you can... We're saying what the standard is, but the board can vote to have... No, Colleen, I, I'm sorry. I'm no. just I'm br bringing this up because my sense is something like this is going to go up on the website. Right? And so if something like this is going to go up on the website, it'll say that non carbon emitting shall be defined as whatever uh, to the extent that any wrecks associated with the output are not sold. So you may want need to change that language. That's the only part I'm discussing. He's just quoting from the slide here. Yeah. You'd, you'd like us to clarify yeah. that it meets the tier it's one tier test exactly. that is non-carbon as opposed to being a tier two right. test, which is a renewable resource. Right. That could be a mistake on my, my part. So I Okay. No. So please. No. Because I'm, I'm. I'm. responding to because you'll put something like this on the website. Right. So I just want to make sure it's. So we'll take care of this. Yeah. No. I. I. I understand. And we'll clarify that all of our resources are what I will call for now tier one resources, non-carbon. Mm -hmm. They meet the clean energy standard, which has a higher energy target than renewable portfolio standard, but an easier threshold to cross, okay? Mm -hmm. So, tier one, non-carbon, tier two, renewable. Now, we are looking at programs where we will acquire and retire the RECs because we have customers that want that renewable tag on what is delivered to them. I know we're all tired. We're all tired, but okay. you know there is an issue with saying non-carbon is one thing and renewable is another. It's it just a it definitional is. thing, as put out by right. the state, the state or the legislature. Right. Mm -hmm. I do think we need to move on. We do. We do. We, we need to move on. Okay, let's move on. It, and if you have uh, residual uh, concerns, please uh, right. put them into. Uh, some context and yep. communicate them I will. Uh, over to us. Let's do that. Um, Good idea. You know, yeah. we're, we're trying very hard to meet the policy requirements of the commission, the statutory requirements uh, of the legislature, and uh, the uh, portfolio requirements 
uh, yep. such as they are. Okay. So thank you, Chuck. Please get that get that to me, and and we'll figure out a way to yep. uh, address whatever the residual concerns are. Thank you. Good. Thank Good you. stuff. Okay. Thanks, Chuck. Sorry, everybody. The meeting's going long. I need to do a better job of moving right. things along. Or fewer things on the or fewer things on the agenda. We had a couple big ones up front, though. Doing fine. Yeah. yeah. Doing fine. Thank you, Phil, for that. Um, okay, uh, Wendy. Sorry to. Uh, we'll uh, give you a glass of adrenaline and. <laughs> <laughs> this is your return appearance, Wendy. Yeah. Now you've been here only since what? Six thirty a.m. No, not that early. Okay. <laughs> only seven. Tracy gets here really early. Wait, oh my God! Whoa. Now that's just not healthy. Right. And she ran here. See, I have young kids. So I have to take care of them. Okay. I'm here Wendy, to present. And thanks for your hard work on the payment stuff, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Colleen yeah. and I did work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I am here to present the financial report uh, for the year ending November th for the 11 months ending November 30th. 2019. So a quick recap of uh, <clears throat> what we're looking at when we look at the financials. <clears throat> Unrestricted cash of 20.7 million covers approximately three months of the average monthly operating expenses of 6.9 million. Accounts receivable are 99% current, which we um, uh, include up to 90 days. Net plant increased by 1.5 million as compared to 11:30 2018. Year-to-date base revenue increased by 3% year-to-year with a decrease in kilowatt-hour sales of 3% as well. That goes through 11-30-2019. Year-to-date purchase power fuel expense exceeds purchase power fuel revenue by about uh, $890,000. Purchase power capacity and transmission revenue exceeds purchase power capacity and transmission expenses by approximately $440,000 and operating and maintenance expenses are under budget by approximately 12.7% at 1130 2019 So the first slide is showing you the trend. Hey, can I ask a quick question? I know we're... A decrease of 3% in kilowatt sales? Yes. This so far? Yes. Okay. That's Is that lower than we expected? Is that a yes. bigger decrease than we expected? Yes. Is part of that though the battery helping out in the for the peaks? And no, it's the weather. No? Okay. It's mild. Mild weather. Weather. Okay, that's all. Sorry. So that's helpful to take into consideration. Thanks. The payment options. Yeah. Okay. So then here we're looking at the uh, trend in kilowatt hour sales, uh, month to month over three years through November. And uh, this is where you can see, if you look at your summer months, this is where you can see the big decrease here. June, July, August, September. This is, this is where the, the big swing is. Uh, the pie chart of the cash balances is always pretty to look at. Uh, currently in depreciation fund, we have $8.9 million towards our capital infrastructure. And as I stated, cash is at approximately $20.7 million. That's the operating fund. And I'd like to point out that uh, sick buyback, the sick leave, restricted sick leave funds total is about uh, $2.3 million. And with the new contracts and the sick buyback option, we may be very happy to see that decrease because we do have some participants taking, taking uh, advantage of that. And the final slide is your year-to-date operating and maintenance expenses, the actual to budgeted. As I stated, 12.7% decrease, however, uh, as usual, at this time of year, we are uh, trying to get all the invoices in to capture all the expenses in the right months through 12.31. So I'm, I'm going to go out saying that it's not going to be that drastic. So as soon as we, get, we capture all the vendor expenses through the 12 months, I think we'll be closer to our target. Maybe not quite there, but closer. And that is uh, that concludes that piece of what Thank I have to say. Thank you very much, Wendy. Yes, but I do have a small other piece. It's the OPEB motion. Ah, yes. Yes. Famous OPEB motion. Yes, it is. I remember that well from a couple of meetings ago. Mm -hmm. There was only two, three minutes discussion. Yeah. Does somebody want to read okay. the motion? Okay, Phil, do you want to read? So, I looked at this motion. I think we should break this into two separate motions, as opposed to one big motion. 
So, and I kind of tweak some of the language here too. So, let me read what the first part of what. Move that the Board of Commissioners vote to rescind the previous board vote of September 19, 2019, relative to a declaration of trust for OPEB purposes. On the recommendation of the general manager. Uh, is there a reason to break this in? Is it a reason it's written as it is? Because I know you went over this with uh, with, with Chris. Voted so that it would be just logical to say right. we're going to go back, rescind this, and then yep. revote. Um, Are you okay with what he's doing here as far as cutting I'm it into fine. two? Okay yes, it's perfectly fine. Okay, fine. Yeah. Carry on. Sorry. Okay. So I made a motion. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor? Okay. Right. Second part is. Uh, Move that the Board of Commissioners vote to adopt and execute the Declaration of Trust presented by the General Manager for OPEB purposes on December 9, 2019, in the recommendation of the General Manager. Okay. Second. Could you ask say the discussion? Can you say that? Sure. What is this? I, I'm okay, so... Uh, something from last time. Okay, but... You want I, me to speak on Can it? you explain yes. what we're fixing? So, a couple of meetings, uh, one after another, we presented the idea that we had to re-accept... Um, I don't have it in front of me. Re-accept a motion. Um, you know what? I do have it in front of me. Re-accept um, 32B, Section 20 of the OPEB statute in order to um, invest. I remember that. Remember that? Okay. Yeah. So we can invest and have a yield a higher percentage for our other post-employment benefits. So at one of the meetings, we had mentioned that we were going to uh, vote to accept a declaration of trust that was not presented to you. We had we had gone through all the other motions that were presented. This particular piece was not presented. That's why we're rescinding it because you voted on something that you didn't have. Okay. So then we have. I sent you the email as the board. I sent the whole declaration of trust for your review, and now we're asking you to okay. accept the declaration right. of trust. Yes. Yes. Great. Yeah. All in favor? I think we did a motion and second. Yep. Five and all opposed against uh, zero. Okay. That is done. That is it. Thank you. Thank you, Hamid. Last but most certainly not least. That's supposed to be a paycheck, Hamid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hamid's <laughs> been here since six yeah. thirty. Okay, I can give you a long version, an hour and a half, if you'd like to stay here, or the very short one for five minutes, or how about that? How about we compromise on 45? I guess, I guess we've reached that. <laughs> compromise on okay, 45. Okay, it's a majority of vote, right? Five, per, five minutes. Yes, All right, thank you so much. people actually voted. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so basically, in uh, you know, a short version, we're doing very well. We are right on target with the projects. We were uh, up until the end of December. And uh, the major construction projects that you see, we completed, we achieved the goals for 2019. Some projects that are still running to 2020. You see the very first one, Marion Street projects, that's going to 2020, uh, phase two, which was budgeted and you approved the next one. You see, these are the scale switches, those smart grid switches that we've installed, and you know, we put them all up, so everything is operational. We just need to add radio to those because the radios they uh, came in late order, so now that they're being installed. The next one, these are the area upgrades that we said we're gonna, we are upgrading the old uh, uh, areas that uh, they needed to be upgraded, uprooted basically, everything, the pri primary, secondaries, the connections and everything, we're on target on those, and we made lots of prog progress on those. The Padmon switch gears, you know, they, we did them and we got them all uh, installed, and we still got more to be installed, about uh, maybe 15 more that they're going to be done within the next three years or so. The next one, you'll see the step down upgrade area. This is really, we made a great progress on those to upgrade those uh, old areas in Linfield mostly. And uh, we have, we've started seeing that, you know, the reliability on those areas have been improving. The same thing in uh, Wilmington area. So these step down areas, the upgrades they're done and we still got more to do. Uh, in uh, 2020, which are planned. The next slide is showing you the maintenance basically programs. We're all on target on maintenance. It's great. It's working. That's one of the, I think, the main reasons for having a great reliability. So uh, the, the, it, it's really, really working well. 
The next slide is showing you basically the age transformers to date that been replaced. As, as you could see, we have in 2019 we replaced 81 transformers, and so far the number of transformers, all the transformers that we have replaced since we started the program in 2015, there are 1,513, which equates to approximately 37 percent. This is a moving target. You know, as the transformers they get in that age of 25 years, they getting on the list to be changed. The next one is the next most important uh, maintenance program, and that's a pole inspection repla uh, and replacement program. We Every year we do 700, 700 to 800 poles, uh, test them. As you could see, we started in 2014, and uh, we had a high percentage of those poles that they failed or com uh, condemned. And now we're getting down really to, since we started with the older poles, now we're getting more into the stabilized region, which is good. And um, so far, uh, out of the f f so far, 4,075 uh, poles inspected and about 518 failed. The, the definition of fail is not really it doesn't mean that the pole is going to fall. If they're condemned, that's yeah. what it means. Mm. Uh, if it's condemned, we immediately you know replace the pole. But the fail meaning there's still life left to the uh, pole, like mm, less than 50 percent. It's not going to go anywhere. That means put it on schedule for upgrade and you know uh, replacement. And that's what we do. We're right on top of that. And we're going again by the age, the most or the old one, old one going to the new one. So that's it. The next slide shows the basic the poles. You see, the in Linfield, we got like about 69 poles. That's the area that we did these uh, step down upgrades. That's why we got 69 poles. That they're double poles. We need to try to do the transfers. The other areas pretty much are within the range that you know we you, you normally see every year, uh, every yeah, every quarter, every year. So, and our crews are, as we're making those transfers, they pulling those pull butts out of the ground in our set areas, rising zone in their set areas. So we are right on target with those. The last one is the best one, which basically says how reliable we are. We got one of the most reliable systems, I can strongly say, in the Northeast region. So we are well below the national and regional averages. And the credit goes to those programs that you know we did for maintenance and you know having a good, uh, well organized program. The last one is showing basically the outages today to, to November 30th, basically, uh, across all those categories. You see the equipments are down really when compared to five years average at the same time. The trees are doing well. For wildlife, we're doing better. Motor vehicle accidents is up. You know, the weather and some announced they're up. But overall, we are on the right track, so they're all working. So, did, did I make it in five minutes or? Uh, <laughs> good. Well done. Uh, thank you. And you don't need any, any questions? Money, right? <laughs> what is it? You don't need any money. No, I don't need any money. Well, next, the next time around. <laughs> thank you very much. Honey. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. okay. Um, who's next? I think we're all set. We're just confirming these. The next meeting will be the 23rd of January and then February 20th and then that's like next week isn't it it's three weeks but it's like two and a half weeks I I'm not oh, sure I'll be here we'll for the 23rd so okay I'm flying back from Florida that day so I don't know if we'll be back in time okay okay so um and uh Dave you'll cover the February cab meeting yes do you have a date on that uh yeah. it should be February 20th I think it's at 5.30. Oh, it's going to be here. Okay. Yeah. Great. But I think it's earlier. But we'll it's check. Earlier? Oh. We'll, we'll double check. Yeah. Yeah, we, we talked yeah. about it today. We talked, we talked about, about it. the electric vehicle workshop. Right. For, for so our we'll meeting. do it the same as the solar. We would have the workshop first and then the regular board meeting okay. after. We were talking about the cab meeting. That they were going to start at 5.30. Yes. And then we would start at 6.30. Got it. Got it. They're starting at 5.30. Okay. Okay. Um... I think we're done. We're going to move, yeah. going to second session. Yep. move to the board going to executive session to consider the purchase of real, real property and return to regular session for the sole purpose of German. Second. Okay. This is my. Talbot. 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 Tal